Well, I suppose the major impact that my background had in the development of the Green Platform was, it goes back to when I was in the Philippines and saw incredible poverty and hunger and injustice at a huge level. And you had a, an elite who were extremely rich and wealthy, but the majority who were in, in, in living in, in terrible conditions of poverty and oppression. And uh, the last 90 days I was there, I buried, 65, I buried 65 children under two years old, all who died from hunger or hunger-related diseases. So when you look at those little coffins and see the ants crawling around their eyes and the flies crawling around their mouth, the little open white coffins, and then out of those situations, you feel that, you know, you can be paralyzed and say, I have no hope, there's nothing I can do. Or you could say, okay, now that this has happened, what can I do positively? And that was the origin of, you know, the, we, we started doing programs with them called Action, Action Reflection Action Programs, where we got them to see, okay, how could they help themselves? We wanted to break the idea of a handout or people being dependent and uh, we wanted to get to the whole structural injustice and see what projects they could do to help themselves that would be long lasting, long after we were gone. But it all built down to, even at that stage, the red platform was the poor me, the victim. We used to say, and Nahas, what is, it's God's will. So then you had to flip them onto the green platform and say, no, this is not God's will. This is this big factory owner's will here who is going to lure and bring you back a barrel of rosary beads, but who is not paying just wages. So if we were to change, you know, we, we have to make the change. And it was, the big struggle was getting them to see that they, they weren't like just victims of life, that they weren't, that they weren't like, just victims on the red platform, but that they could be creative subjects of their own future on the green platform, that they could determine their destiny, that things could be different. And gradually with the programs we brought in, there were pig programs, grameen programs, hen programs, fishing programs, cooperative programs, but they got enormous empowerment. And uh, Father Sean Conton would be a great example of that because he saw the same poverty and hunger. He could have sat on the red platform and said, this is powerless, there's nothing I can do. Instead of that, he said, okay, this is this. It's, it is as it is. Here's the poverty, here are the funerals, here are the dead children. But he went to Pakistan, learned about the Grameen Bank from Professor Yunus, uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus over there who won the Nobel Prize. This is about microfinance where you give uh, small bits of money out to uh, mainly women who set up their own businesses. When he left the Philippines in 2007, he had, um, there were 17,000 businesses being run there by ordinary people. And that is the difference that it's about empowering people, changing people, doing stuff like that.